Howdy. I have a pretty good one today. That is stay calm or stay silent amidst chaos. Right now in the state of Florida, we're going through a hurricane right now. That means that everyone and their mother is freaking out about getting gas, getting food, getting groceries, getting whatever they can get their hands on. The problem is, is that when everyone decides that they're going to take as much food and gas as possible, everything runs out. And now all the stores are closed because these people are freaking out so much that they got no food or they're not organized enough. So now there's that problem. Or their employees don't want to work either. I'm assuming there's probably a few people that have quit due to these problems. I think um, this really is to letter myself in the future, and, uh, and maybe it applies to you, is learning how to keep your mouth shut. You need to learn how to shut your mouth because work and friends and, and co-workers and, and, and relationships, you shouldn't learn how to lie. No, I'm not saying that. But you should have some, some silence. You shouldn't talk to people. I realized today that I can't even trust anyone with anything I say. There's nothing I can say to anybody that I, I really trust to, for them to hold to my themselves. You know. There's been times where, you know, I, I, even my parents or, or friends, close friends, close coworkers, it don't matter. Something I say ends up being said to someone else. And vice versa. I mean, I'm not exactly the best secret keeper either. I get it. You know, as humans, we communicate a lot. And uh, part of that means that mm, we like to give stuff away. We like to say things that we've heard. But um, it's hard to hold secrets for others. So I don't put any judgment on people that can't hold my secrets. And it's not that I have secrets, it's just, I don't want everybody to know about that. Like right now. You know, I'll tell them when I want to tell them, but not right now. So you telling them on my behalf is a little concerning, right? And also as friends, you know, there's certain discretion that you use. <coughs> There's certain things that you say just to your friends and you don't want your boss to find out. Not that that's bad, it's just, hey, that's something that I keep between my friend, which is unprofessional, I guess you would say. And then the other one would be professional towards my boss. And like I, let me preface this again, that I'm not saying something diabolical. It's just, uh, you know, a level of professionalism that I don't want them to see. That being said, I think you shouldn't make your coworkers your friends. I think I found that out today. Um, a really good friend that I used to have, a coworker actually, he said something that at the time pissed me off, but I understand now. Your coworkers are not your friends. And it is so true. Because at the end of the day, if your boss asks you about your coworker slash friend and you know too much, you might say some things that you're not supposed to. If you were just their coworker or just their your friend, you would know. But you're their coworker and friend, so you know everything about them. Which means that your boss can exploit that information. And vice versa about you. If someone else knows, you know, your personal life and your business life. It can be a problem. 
So I think I figured out today that I'm going to prevent myself from speaking as much. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to do it well. I'm going to get better at my job. And then at the end of the day, I won't. I won't let anyone know anything about me. This really sucks because I thought I was an introvert. I thought that I was so introverted that, you know, like I need to get out of my shell more to talk to people and to to strengthen relationships. And that goes for coworkers and friends. But now I'm starting to see the ramifications for just trying to be open with people, being honest with people. And it's only gotten me issues. It's only got given me problems. So I think this is as much to me as it is to you. I'm not going to talk to my coworkers outside of work. I might send an Instagram reel or something, but I'm not sending anything to them. That's what sucks is because I really don't have any outlets outside of work that are friends. A lot of my friends that I've had over time are from Boy Scouts or another job I worked at. And even then, uh, even high school too. All of those friendships are so surface level, I never really got any depth to them. And that means that with no depth means no friendship. It's acquaintanceship, it means nothing. And ultimately, their closest friends are their coworkers that you see every day. But if you can't talk to your coworkers because you can't trust them to be just your friend and not your coworker and friend, it becomes a problem. So I understand. And if you're watching this, if you're one of my coworkers, I don't put it past you. Yeah, I don't think you did anything wrong. It's just, uh, I, I finally figured it out, you know, is that there's, they aren't your friends. Even after having someone's back in the past, it, it doesn't matter. They'll nickel and dime you on everything you do. So, that's it. But anyways, let's get into fear. In the world of chaos, you must have silence and peace. I think that's very true. Uh, a lot of people around us right now in Florida are freaking out, panicking, grabbing all this gas, grabbing all this, you know, uh, food and stuff at the store. <clears throat> all the gas stations are empty. Maybe Wawa has something, I don't know. But everyone's panicking. Oh, thank God I went to Aldi yesterday because apparently they're closed. Um, but everyone's freaking out right now. And what I saw today at the gas station in the morning was everyone got in a line for the most part. They're all filling up little gas containers and stuff for their cars great for them. I don't have one. I got my car and that's it. But on top of that, you got people that are trying to cut in line. And there was an older woman that she was, uh, I mean, we're all going one way. Four lanes. One, two, three, four. Through the gas pumps. There's like eight cars behind me. I'm filling up my gas. Actually, I pull up after the truck leaves and she tries to jump in there. Little BMW driver. And I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, don't hit my car, it's brand new, okay? Second of all, get in line. Now, did I say that to her? No. Was there a lot of facial gestures and a lot of hand movements from her? Yes. But what I saw in her eyes was panic. I wasn't angry at her. I I was worried for her, really. And it's because that these people watch too much of the news. 
I know it's a Cat 5 hurricane, maybe a Cat 4 now. I know it can be scary. I know, I know that even if you've lived in Florida forever, it can be worrisome. I get it. There's probably going to be a lot of devast devastation. All we can do is hope for the best. But what we shouldn't be doing is reverting back. See, those instincts that you have, the, those stressors, the, the, the anxiety that you have, you're reverting back into an animal self where your instincts have control over you and not your sense of communication and compassion. Your humanity is being stripped from you when you're under stress. You start, you know, you start getting shaky and you, you swing on somebody or maybe you freak out, you know? So being able to have control over your emotions and being able to think logically, to think compassionately and to understand the rules and laws in place the social laws too. I'm in line here, get behind me. I've been here longer, simple as that. You get in line after me. So, it's important to have compassion for those people too. And I really worry for that woman because that means that she's been watching the news, she's been freaking out, She's probably seen that 20 gas stations don't have gas. And now she's curious if she's going to get gas. And she ended up getting it, I saw. She backed in a bunch of times and then she couldn't get it. And I mean, it, it was like her life depended on it. But we, we can't think that way. Because your life doesn't depend on you getting gas. Somebody can help you out. We're going to work together because... I hope that for every hoarder of gas there is, there's also another one that hoards the gas too that is able to give some to their neighbor. So as long as we work together, or at least offer help in times of need to others, there is no problem with you taking extra gas or taking extra food as long as you're able to share with others when it comes down to it. Did you have to buy the entire section of luncheon meat from Aldi or Walmart? No. But kudos to you for being prepared. And it's going to be very nice to know you here at the apocalypse or whatever you want to call it. But anyways, uh, I'm sorry I'm sick right now. I probably sound like garbage but yeah I, I just really hope y'all do well during the hurricane and uh, just be calm in chaos as the world starts to burn you have to be the water the ice that stands against it and while everyone's freaking out around you you need to take control of the situation and pull everyone together. <clears throat> Another thing is, is that when you're at work and you get told you're not good enough, don't lash out. Whatever you do, don't lash out because it don't work. But also if you feel underappreciated at work, just realize that these people don't they don't understand your point of view. They never will see through your eyes. And that's okay. I wish they would be able to see through your eyes, but they don't. They, they don't understand that you have good intentions. And at the end of the day... At the end of the day, if you have good intentions and someone emails you about something that you did and it was a it was a minor accident it's as simple as oh oh my mistake I, I, yeah it's a bad habit I'm trying to knock it okay won't happen again I, I try I'll try to you know 
it's as simple as talking to me and saying, hey, uh, can you help help me out? Just, you know, we do this every day. It's about an hour, you know. Just come over here and help us out. Okay, my bad. I forgot today, but I'll come over and help you out. No problem. So, I really hate using email through work. And we use Teams as well. Just through Microsoft as well. I don't like having the paper trail because quite honestly the paper trail is it's good to have to cover your butt however it dehumanizes people it, it depersonalizes where you're at you know it says oh hey you did this wrong boom send and it's very much degrading it's very much like, dang, like, here it was, I thought I was a decent worker. You know, I'm, I'm not saying I'm the best. What I am saying is that we're a lot short-staffed right now. And, you know, I assume that I was pretty good at my job. I'm not great. I'm not perfect. I'm also learning with no teacher right now. So I have to ask my boss, like, once a day a quick question like how to do a certain thing but I don't have a teacher right now so I don't know what I'm supposed to do I just have to figure it out on my own and I feel like the weight of the world is on my shoulders for my department and that may be egotistical too if I say that because then well you know you're you're working with someone else but work with a whole team but at the same time I feel like the torch has been passed on to me to know everything but I don't know everything yet and that scares me and uh, I wish that transfer of information went faster that knowledge transferred faster and I, I've been trying to be as receptive as possible to try to learn as fast as possible but without a teacher a dedicated teacher I'm a little bit lost and uh, my problem-solving skills can only go so far I need to know how to fix a problem and how, how to know that if I'm doing something wrong or not and then from there I'll figure out how to do it right but it's very difficult and uh, it's very demoralizing when you're, you make a mistake, you get, you know, you get pushed down. And then when you don't make a mistake, you get nothing. So at the end of the day, only your mistakes are brought up to attention. And the only the most negative things in your life are the ones that stick in your head. Out of all the people that I check in, in the ER or an outpatient or, or wherever, the people that were the most rude to me are the ones I remember. Now, I won't go next time, oh, I remember you. No, nothing like that. But I'll be like, I remember you, what's your name? I'll look at the record and go, oh, it's that guy. So like, I know, I remember those things. And everyone does, is because it's a survival instinct. I'm getting into it, but I think it's important to be at peace with yourself and realize that even in the most scary, crazy situations, you need to hold your cool, and I think you'll be all right. But anyways, that's everything for me from today, and uh, I'll see you. Bye now.